Good morning. It's Monday again, and I get to speak with you. This is one of my favorite things to do all week. I enjoy that you take the time to tune in and, you know, leave a comment or two. Let me know your thoughts. I enjoy the discussions that follow. But today is the first Monday in Advent. Can you believe Advent? I'm still stuck in April or somewhere back months ago. This year seemed like it started in March and has lasted about, what, 37 months so far? <laughs> but folks, the theme of the first Sunday of Advent is hope. And that is the perfect theme for today. If you scrolled the news feed this morning when you woke up, you'll notice that Moderna has also shown effectiveness large-scale effectiveness in their coronavirus vaccine, and that is fantastic news. We need this hope because it gives us a light at the end of the tunnel to focus on. You know, we're not back like we were in the spring, just wondering how long is this going to last with no end in sight, and who knew? But now we have a light to look toward. And that can change things. We can, we can count down days. We have all kinds of calendars for counting down. There are apps on the phone for counting down. We can almost count down this pandemic because there is news on the horizon. And the biology geek in me has to tell you that the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines are really something to get excited about not just for this virus, but it's a new technology using messenger RNA. And there was always some thought that there could be some real potential in messenger RNA, but there was never money there to fund the research because it was potential. And the money to fund research goes to things that are more than just potential. But at this point, when the world really needed it, all of the money, all the resources, all the smarts were focused in on one goal, and this messenger RNA technology was funded, and the, the applications for this are to dream on. And, okay, let me tell you why it's so exciting. The messenger RNA is... Well, let's look at it this way. The DNA in your cells prints out a blueprint and it gets sent to the factory, the ribosomes in your cells where the proteins are built. So everything that your body constructs, everything your cells produce, the DNA prints out the blueprint. And the messenger RNA, the mRNA is exactly what it says. It picks up the blueprint from the DNA for the proteins to build and takes that blueprint to the ribosomes, to the factory, to the protein factory. Now think about it like this. Think about it in terms of spy and intrigue. If we were setting this up as a movie, what we would be in effect doing with this messenger RNA vaccine is sneaking in behind the lines and switching out that blueprint. So it's like a spy is going in and finding that MR, mRNA target and switching out the plans so that when that information gets to the factory, different proteins are being made. One specifically designed and coded for. Now think about that. Right now it's coded for the coronavirus vaccine. But folks, this has some implications that could do amazing things with treatments of cancer and it could change vaccine technology and everything else. But anyway, enough of the biology geek. That has me excited today and has me wanting to talk about hope. And while that does provide me hope, there are many other things that always give me hope that perhaps give me a bigger reason to hope. And that's because I look around at the community I live in and the people in my life. And, you know, people want to bring out the best in others a lot of times. And in my own village, 
a family set up a candy cane tree. Well, a bush, I guess. The bush was there. And they decorated it with candy canes and put the word out for kids to come and get a candy cane off the tree. Put one on. Take one. Whatever you need. It's a small thing, but it's something that kids will remember. I also have hope because there are people in town that are organizing to make Christmas special for all the kids. All kids in our village will have an opportunity to have a good Christmas from Santa Claus this year. That gives me hope. And there are people that have worked hard to ensure that um, that Dove and Decatur, the women and children's shelter, will have some things for Christmas. You know, there's a family that's setting up a Santa's workshop on their front porch. Since we won't be able to go into malls and visit Santa's this year in our community, you can go up on the front porch and you, that's a large front porch. You can get us, stay as distant as you like. You can get a picture if you want. You can definitely get some hot chocolate. And it's just the little things that people do to help each other out, to brighten things a little bit. That's what gives me hope. My neighbors give me hope. Do you think I have any idea what a recycling day is? I never do. I never do. I do for the days ahead of time, but when recycling day actually gets here, never remember. But there's a kid next door that always does and makes sure my bins are out for recycling. As long as there are people in this world and in my life who are willing to do a little something to make someone else's life better, there's always going to be reason to have hope. There is a group that works to make sure all of the kids at school have all the school supplies they need. The Sangamon Valley Backpack Project, and that spans three communities in our school district. But the hope is that every kid will have the supplies they need, and the teachers as well. Things like this give me hope. The summer rec program, ensuring that kids have something to do in the summer that's outside and fun. The food pantry. People need food pantries and we have those in our communities. And this morning, I don't, oh, there went one. There's a snowflake that went by. And before you hate on me, don't send me things, comments about how awful snow is and the cold is. I just want to tell you, you can have that opinion. And I will definitely be complaining about snow and cold at some point after Christmas. But right now, seeing these snowflakes gives me hope because seasons change. It reminds me that we are in a season and what exists now lasts for a season and then the seasons change. And soon it's going to be spring and then summer and this pandemic and coronavirus that we're in. It's a long season, but it is a season and it will pass. I'm also a Cubs fan. I have learned how to make hope part of my DNA. <laughs> so folks, I invite you to find those things in your life and in your community that show that people are thoughtful, people are loving. If you forget that God is good, look around, look around at the people that are doing things for others. And you know, we did a lot of fighting and arguing months ago, but right now when people need help, there's no questionnaire to fill out. People just want to bring light and goodness to other folks. That gives me hope. But perhaps the greatest source of hope, not perhaps, definitely, the greatest source of hope is the upcoming celebration of Christ's birth. And as I look around at the people in my village and at the snowflakes that are going by the window, I can see beyond to the, to the fields beyond the edge of the community, 
then those fields are lying now in rest after the work of harvest. And it reminds me of the cycle of life. That field is going to be frozen solid. And then you would need a jackhammer to break the surface. But it won't be long until that ground will soften again. That hardest impenetrable ground will soften and the tiniest green vulnerable shoots will push their way up through the surface. Life always wins. And then once those sprouts are there, they're going to grow into a plant that grows toward the light and produce an abundant harvest. Life always wins. Go outside and take a walk and look at the sidewalk. See where the weeds are coming up through the cracks in the cement. Cement's pretty strong and durable stuff, and a plant doesn't seem really strong, but life always wins. Life will find a way. Life can break through the toughest circumstances. That's why I have hope. God just can't leave things alone. Where there's despair, God brings joy. Where there's hurt, God brings healing. Where there is death, God brings resurrection. So my friends, don't get bogged down by the tunnel vision of this pandemic. The suffering is real and I'm not, I'm not trying to minimize anyone's suffering who have lost loved ones or their health or their jobs or one of the many other things that people have lost. But don't lose hope because there's so much to be hopeful about. God is everywhere. And my hope is that you will begin to see those signs as well. And as always, if this has been a blessing to you, please share it. Uh, there's a YouTube channel that has past videos on it. It's Melissa Ebkin is the name of the YouTube channel. So I went really tricky there in naming that. See what I did? But, uh, you know, connect with me. Tell me where you find hope. And let's share that with everyone else. I hope you I hope you have a great week, friends. Bye for now.